The Dairy School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pioneer, a seed brand of Corteva AgriScience. Bernard Tobin here at the uh, Western Canadian Dairy Seminar. I'm catching up now with uh, Dr. Laura Solano. Uh, Dr. Solano, thanks for stopping by. Thank you. <laughs> um, you've just finished your presentation, Key Considerations for Implementation of a Hoof Health Program. You know, really practical tips about how to reduce lameness through uh, better hoof health. And well, I want to talk about a little bit of research you showed there. Um, you know, really over the last decade, we haven't made much strides in the ways of hoof health and lameness. We're still at 20%. I guess, what's happening or what's not happening? <laughs> uh, yeah, it seems that we haven't made much progress in there and we're, we're moving uh, towards that. But I think um, we are, I think we're lacking in, in implementing practices that we know that work and would increase our odds to reduce lameness. So I think that we're, um, we, we're doing very well into having you know, a hoof trimming program in place in most of the farms and majority of farms also have some area to treat lame cows and so on. Uh, I think we're lacking in the part of uh, locomotion scoring cows more often, detecting that moderately lame cow and treating, their, treating them before they become chronically lame. And I think one of the um, issues too is that we're failing into uh, following up with that chronic cow and uh, make sure that she recovers, not only she recovers, but how is she looking in 30 days from now, in 60 days from now. Uh, those are main things. And from the cow comfort po point of view, I think we're still uh, lacking a practices such as deep bedding. We know that bedding is associated with less lameness. We want to see at least four inches of bedding in stalls and we barely see that. Uh, Alberta is an example, only about 70% of the farms only use less than two inches of bedding. So we're failing in, in, those, uh, in those areas, I think. Um, also, a lot of progress has to be done uh, with the foot bathing and the protocols around that and the consistency that we run them. Um, and the uh, transition period also has to be looked at, mm -hmm. and we're not in there yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, exactly. I want to dig a little bit deeper into that in a second, but I guess, first of all, you also showed a study that, you know, on some farms in Canada, you've got 2% lameness. Um, you've got as high as 70. What's, what's happening on those 2% farms? Yep, uh, so we went to over 140 farms in Canada and collected information on absolutely all the risk factors that you can, well, a lot of risk factors that you can think of, spent six to eight hours collecting data on management and facilities and animal-based measures. And the only difference that we found between the farms that are having really high lameness prevalence and the farms that are having really low lameness prevalence was that the ones with low lameness prevalence uh, had uh, uh, sand as a stall base or dirt as a stall base and deep bedding. It didn't matter really, uh, didn't seem to uh, matter much what type of stall base as far as uh, a mattress over a geo mattress or a rubber or a water bed, but the amount of bedding was what seemed to be uh, the critical point here. And the farms that had uh, really high lameness, that what differentiate those was that um, they were usually small herds, less than 100 cows, and they had slippery floors. Mm. So those were the main differences between high lameness and low lameness. You talked about you know managing lameness and, and, and hoof health, and you really said you really need to break the program into small parts. That was your your key matches there. Um, maybe we'll go through that pretty quickly. And you talk about you know detection, treatment, management, score your cattle. Um, you know lameness leads to more lameness. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think uh, before when you ask one of the things that we're failing, I think uh, not detecting cows that are lame in an early stage, that's a critical part. Um, so things that we need to consider are, well, locomotion scoring a little bit more often for sure. Well, not a little bit, every two weeks a month. That can bring you a lot of uh, knowledge and ideas on how to get uh, identify those cows and get those cows and treat them immediately. So knowing, first of all, 
what is the lameness issue that we have in our farm and what is causing that lameness. So which are the main lesions that are uh, occurring if it's soil ulcers or white lines or digital dermatitis, where if it's infectious, an infectious problem or a non-infectious problem. So that's the main part in there. And from there, that it can get uh, complicated and it can get very big. And that's why I said, you know, break that down into little parts and look at, the, at your lame cow diagnosis and treatment. How is that area? Look at your hoof trimming protocol. Uh, look at the cow comfort, look at the transition period, look at the uh, infection control part and break those down into farther uh, detailed areas uh, that each could have. Mm -hmm. um, Laura, what about, uh, I guess we'll wrap it up. You know, we have, um, you, you've done your research, you've gone from 20% to 20% in, <laughs> yeah. in, in the last decade. Yeah. Um, you know, do you think hoof trimming will get more, and, and hoof care, will get more traction? I mean, like, there is money to be made in healthy cows and, mm -hmm. and, and mobile cows. Um, are we going to see those numbers come down in the next decade? I would, uh, I would hope so. Uh, I think hoof trimming already has a lot of traction. I think it's in place in most farms. I think it needs uh, fine-tuning and knowing how to incorporate that data and make it applicable at the farm level. So uh, incorporating all the data that hoof trimmers give us, all the lesion records, and combining that with cow data, knowing days in milk, which one of my cows, which lactation number, which stage of lactation are the most prone or the high risk for which type of lesion, seasonality is also, uh, where are the new cases of lameness, where are the chronic cases of lameness, like th there is a lot of information that goes beyond just uh, hoof trimming and also ensuring that hoof trimming is done correctly is a must. Mm -hmm. Dr. Solano, I want to thank you for stopping by yeah. and joining us on the Dairy School. Thank you, <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs>